I prefer this one because I have a lot of emulation, right? If I had one or two games, maybe it'd be fine to put those in my Steam library, but I don't. I have I have thousands, tens of thousands of items in there. So Emulation Station gives you a one-stop shop to get to all of your different gaming systems. And we're back to arcade. So if we go into arcade, yeah, those are the those are the four games, but Boy, this sure does look kind of drab and plain, doesn't it? I, I think so. So we'll go ahead and we can launch one of these games just to make sure it works. And don't expect miracles. I am, a, am on a virtual machine after all. Okay, take note that it just said that achievements can't be used with this core. Yeah, that's because it's using the MAME core and MAME doesn't allow retro achievements. So, but you can see it's working. So let's get out of there. And you can see that all of the games that I originally had copied over are here. Four arcade games, two NES games, two Game Boy Advance games, and so on. Wait a minute. Two PlayStation games. There's only one PlayStation game. Oh, our buddy Einhander is back to screw us again. So one of these is the bin and one of these is the queue. Again, using CHDs is a lot easier. But you can see, yeah, this is great. But boy, this is boring, man. Where are the cool graphics? Where's all that other good stuff? Well, you got to scrape those. So let's go into the menu. And we're going to go to Scraper. And we're going to choose where we want to choose to scrape from. Now, Screen Scraper or the Games DB, right? I'm going to use Screen Scraper because I actually have an account there. And there's pretty much no limit to how much I can scrape. Now, you'll need to provide your account settings. Right, so I'm going to put in my account stuff. Remember to bl blur that out, folks. All right. And what games do you want to scrape? All games? Nah. Let's just scrape G PlayStation 2 games. Now it's going to reach out to Screen Scraper. Okay, so sometimes it doesn't pick them up right. Or I put in the wrong credentials. One of the two, right? So let's try to scrape a different system. Let's try Arcade. And let's see how it works. There we go. Now we're scraping. We're scraping with power. So what it's going to do is it's going to grab, depending on what you selected, by default, it's going to grab metadata, a screenshot, a box shot, a little video clip, which is very cool. So, and you can toggle all of that. I'm just using the default what's out of the box. So here we go. Now you're probably saying, boy, this is slow. And now it's only slow. Well, it is slow, but it's slower because I'm on a virtual machine. A pirate version of Mario Brothers. Hmm. I don't think that kind of, I don't think that got done correctly. But wait a minute. Hey, hang on, hang on, hang on. So why, this one here, right? The Warriors. How come I can't scrape that one? So let's take a look. Let's say that we're going to scrape just this game. Edit game metadata. Scrape. See what the problem is here. No games found. We're going to refine our search and we're going to actually make that name something correct. Let's see if it scrapes it now. Again, this is faster when you're not on a VM. Okay. All right. Uh, various members of warrior gangs. Yeah, perfect. That's what I want. So this is how you do sort of one-off scrapes that didn't work right. Okay. Okay. Make sure you save. Now, hey, that looks better. Ah, much better. We got some graphics. Got some very nice looking arcade. We had all of those scraped as well. And you could go and scrape the rest of them. Now, look at that. Boring. Yay. Boring. Yay. I like it. Okay. So now you've got the games set up. So you have one interface to rule them all, which is emulation station. You're not injecting everything into the Steam library. So, but what does that look like? Let's say that we want to go ahead and take a look at what that does look like. Now, you remember, I did inject the Warriors into Steam. 
So there they are. Love me some baseball furies, right? So let's go ahead and see what this looks like. Outside of basically having, you know, no details or anything, because after all, this is not a real Steam game. This is an injected non-Steam game. You can actually go in here if you're really curious and go into properties. And you're going to see that it's going to run a command prompt. And this is all the crap it's going to pass. If you're really curious to see what the sort of mystic magic is going on here. Now, I don't think this virtual machine is going to play the Warriors very well. <laughs> but let's try it anyway. What's the worst that could happen, right? It blows up. Now, you could use, I could see an argument that if you were using Steam in big screen mode and you had primarily an emulation box, so you have a box plugged into your TV that's all about emulation, you're not using it as your regular Steam gaming desktop, I could see an argument for injecting your games into the Steam library so really you have just one interface because right now you're using Steam to access emulation station. So it's sort of an extra hop. I could, I, there is an argument, but if you're going to, if you're going to shove thousands and thousands of titles in, please folks, I beg you use emulation station. And uh, my guess here is, is that we're not, Oh, look at that. It's actually going to run. I can't believe it. This isn't a virtual machine, folks. This is fantastic. This is fantastic. I love it. And so this is uh, the Warriors game. For uh, Listen, it's a rock star game. If you've never played this game and you're even a remote fan of the Warriors, this is freaking awesome. This is a great game. All right. We're not, we're not here to play games, though. We're going to go ahead and close the game, exit without saving. And there you go. So what have we, what have we seen here? So we've now set up MU Deck completely. We've done everything that we need to do. We've got... Retro Achievement Setup, we've got um, Screen Scraper set up. so if we want to go and scrape the rest of this stuff, um, we can, so we can go into Emulation Station. MU Deck, we have our BIOS files set up, and we have our games set up, so that's kind of it. I mean, this is really sort of where it ends. So all of this stuff was came courtesy to you of MU Deck with a single easy, oh, I already have it running with a very single, easy interface. Now, let me show you a few more things. Let me show you a few more things about EmuDeck. Um, so you can go back and change your settings and manage your emulators and all that sort of thing. The BIOS checker, of course, was nice. Cloud saves. Um, so there's a whole bunch of good stuff there. But here's a bonus feature, EmuDeck Store. Emulators often uh, justify their existence by saying, oh, you can play homebrew games. Though. Yeah, like no, anybody's playing homebrew games. They all want to play commercial games. But there are games available that are homebrew, and damn it, some of them are pretty dang cool. So they have a, a variety of systems down here. Game Boy Color, I bet, has got some good ones. And these are all free. These are all games you can download right from this interface. Super Nintendo, NES. Pretty cool, right? Genesis. There's a lot of stuff here. And all of this is... Free as in beer. Yeah, for your uh, for your uh, perusal. Now, we're not going to install it. I just wanted to see that it was there. And that's kind of it. Now, if you came from the Steam Deck, you're probably saying, man, there's a lot of stuff missing here. And you're right. Um, things like the uh, compression tool is missing. Um, but again, this is early access. And so far, it's looking really good. A couple of minor glitches here and there, of course. But that's what early access is all about. Now, I promised I would talk a little bit about um, BIOS files and ROM images, game images. What can you do to help find these sorts of things? Well, first off, games are pretty easy to get. Uh, Google is your friend. It's pretty easy to find games. I'm going to go ahead and scrape while we're sitting here. Why not? Well, I'm going to tell you more stuff. So we're going to select all games, all systems. I guess I could have just selected all. I guess I didn't have to scrape the ones I already scraped, but whatever. So let's talk a little bit about the mentality here. So from a, from a morality point of view, if you're, if you're emulating content that's not for sale, you can't get it anywhere, it's hard to buy, the hipsters have a you know, Mario Kart going for like uh, you know, $900 on eBay, emulate the thing. I mean, 
Nobody cares. You're not taking the food out of anybody's mouth other than scalpers. Now, Nintendo's going to cry, oh, but we have emulation stuff you can buy. Yeah, well, you're not emulating the stuff we want, pal, right? So there's a whole bunch of ways you can morally justify uh, emulation as a whole. However, I would, I would ask you to consider if you don't own a platform that is currently in development and uh, it is actually making money for the copyright holders in the intended market, not some sweatshop, you know, that sells bootleg games. I'm talking about like the Nintendo Switch, right? That, that, that is Nintendo's livelihood. That's their current game console. You know, emulation's like, oh, nobody cares if I emulate a Commodore 64. Yeah, but they might care if you're emulating a Switch. Now, listen, if you own a Switch and you bought Switch games, you just want another platform to play them on, are you morally righteous there? Of course you are. I mean, listen, uh, it's probably illegal anyway with the Digital Money and Copyright Act uh, saying you can't uh, access anything that's encrypted, essentially. So <laughs> there is that. But again, from a moral point of view, you're not selling the games. You're not trading them online. You're, it's for your own personal use, folks. Yeah. Use a little common sense, I guess. Use some common sense and maybe a little compassion. Oh, Nintendo's a big corporation. We're sticking it to them by pirating their games. Yeah, you know what? Don't. I mean, listen. If, if you really want the new Zelda game, go buy the new Zelda game, and then you can emulate it. I mean, you should own a Switch, too, but I'm just sort of pontificating here. I, I, really, I, I really don't want emulation being used as a tool to screw people out of livelihoods in the current, the current generation and money. Usually, this isn't the case. Usually, emulators uh, aren't current with the systems that are involved. But in this case, you know, I, I do. And by the way, your ISP can watch you, right? So if you're not using VPNs or anything like that, you're using torrents, especially good Lord, um, stand clear. As for BIOS files, this is actually a lot easier than you would think. And I can give you a little bit of information on how to get those. That's not actually telling you how to get those. And hopefully YouTube will not uh, kick my channel off into oblivion. Um, for users. Okay, so here we go. So if you go into, um, I believe it's core emulation, right? And let's say you're curious about, you're curious about the, um, the uh, let's see, uh, uh, Sega emulation, Sony emulation. So let's say you're interested in PlayStation 1 games. Um, so if you go in here, it will actually tell you what files are required, even give you a checksum. This is what you need. And hopefully they're not going to kick my butt for showing you on screen what it is you need. Now, you can't download them from here. But once you know the file name, Google's your friend, right? This is how you find BIOS files. Listen, I hope this helped you out. If, if it did, if you learned anything new, please like, subscribe, leave a comment, good or bad. I try to read them all. Of course, uh, hitting the notification bell gives you uh, immediate knowledge of when another video like this one comes out. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, I, I had a good time putting it together outside of running into a couple of uh, glitches, but uh, this is this is good stuff. It's worth your $3.50, folks. Uh, listen, I know nobody wants to pay for anything anymore. It, it makes me crazy. These people are working you know, 10-hour days at work, and then they come home for five hours at night and code this great stuff for you. And it's like, oh, 350. Well, I'll just install them myself. Come on, come on. Give, give, give these people a break. Come on. All right. That's it for me. This is Shane R. Monroe. Thanks so much for watching and take care.